Welcome, welcome. So I have the pleasure of introducing Kurt Hammerly here of Hammerly Ceramics um, for his talk. Oh, I'm supposed to remind you to silence your cell phones. Um, do not block aisles for fire code, but I think that's not an issue anymore because we're full house. Um, so yeah, Hammerly Ceramics, he, has, he studied architecture in school and now runs his business full time. Uh, making making pots, and so he's going to tell us about some brand building with Instagram, and I'm excited to hear it. And maybe one of these days he'll have as many followers as I do. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Have a good one. Thanks, Sean. I really appreciate that. We good to go? Everyone can hear me. Fantastic. I appreciate it, Sean. And today we're here to talk about brand building on Instagram. Um, being an artist, especially a ceramicist, in a lot of times can be a very solitary existence. You're in your basement or your garage, and you're spread far away from other people that are doing the same things as you. Um, and Inseca is fantastic because it brings us all together and we get to enjoy this great time together. So can we hear it for Inseca? <clears throat> But there, the rest of the time, what are we supposed to do? Everyone's far apart. It, it's really difficult to get all the work done. Sean, during his panel, said that he works 100 hours a week. And I'm sure a lot of people in this room can uh, attest to that. So it's hard to make time to go and visit all these other clay artists um, everywhere else. There's a tool out there. As I'm sure all of you know what this talk is about, there's a tool out there that can help us with this. And it's called Instagram. I want to heavily emphasize that Instagram is a social media platform and it's a social media tool. We use it for marketing, but it is at its core, it's this social media tool. Um, this is a picture from last year in Pittsburgh at Inseca where I got to meet some of my favorite Instagram artists that I had been chatting with for uh, over a year at that point. And it was just this amazing thing that these people that I had talked to on Instagram for so long and never met in person, we all got to come together in Inseca. But we, we really built friendships on Instagram over the course of those, um, those earlier years. Oh, shoot. We'll get to that. <clears throat> I can sum up the power of Instagram in one quick story. And that is, um, last year at Inseca in Pittsburgh, I was walking around. It was my first time at Inseca. I was super overwhelmed. I'm sure some people in this audience can attest to that, that it is this very overwhelming, very busy time. So I'm walking around, and I'm having a great time just walking around the convention center alone, and I see someone. And I don't know if he's in the audience right now, but I see uh, Jonathan Kaplan from uh, across the hall. And Jonathan is someone that I really admire. He has um, his aesthetic for ceramics is heavily influenced by architecture and geometry. And he's a mold maker. And he has a gallery in Denver, which is where I'm from. Um, so in my head, I was like, this is, this is someone that I absolutely have to know. <clears throat> so I, I built up the courage to walk up to him. And I walk across the floor, and this is me as I've never been in a gallery. I've never had a show. I'm, I'm nobody. I have been doing ceramics at this point for, I had been selling for less than a year at this point. And I walk up to him, and I put my hand out, and I say, hi, I'm Kurt. And he says, Hammerly, I know. I've seen your work. And I was like, are you out of your mind? Like, I, I've never done anything. I just couldn't believe it. I, I, re I don't remember the rest of the conversation. My brain melted. <laughs> we talked for a while. And I, I was so caught off guard that I just forgot how to speak. And since then, Jonathan has been nice enough to have me down to his studio in Denver and um, gave me a great tour, gave me some great advice about this business that we're in. And it's, it's just fantastic to me, because that, that interaction only exists because of Instagram. He had seen my work on Instagram. Like I said, I had never been anywhere else. So I, I really like this story because people, people try to treat it as this just straight up forced marketing tool. And I really want to drive home that it is a social media network and should be treated as such. 
<clears throat> now I know that um, Instagram can be a very controversial topic for artists. I've heard many opinions at this very conference. Some people think that it is ruining ceramics education for various reasons. They think that um, there are artists that are getting large amounts of attention um, when the certain people don't think that they deserve that. And then even other people think that it's just this place for ego stroking and it's generally bad for society. <clears throat> and you may be thinking to yourself, he, he's clearly biased. And I absolutely am, 100%. Instagram has shaped my entire adult life and my future. Um, it's allowed me to quit my job, become a full-time artist, and it is even the reason that I'm here speaking in front of you today. And I really appreciate that you all came. And then we have this packed house. This is, this is tremendously exciting for me. Um, however, along that way, as biased as I am, it has introduced me to some of my best friends in the world. It has sparked my creativity countless times, and it has allowed me to view some of the most incredible ceramic art in the world, all without spending um, tons of time and money to fly around the world to see it. OK. How many people in this room are on Instagram? Awesome. That's fantastic. How many of you follow and engage with artists that you admire on a regular basis? That is. Awesome, that's a very high number compared to the first one. Um, has anyone in this room made at least one friend on Instagram that you don't live near? That's unbelievable, that is, that's truly amazing and to me that is, the, that is the power of this tool that we're using. Now, uh, this last one, I'm just interested for my own information. How many people in this room have talked to me personally on Instagram through DMs or comments? That's, that's quite a few people. I, I've, as I've grown, I've tried to continually respond to everyone that engages with me. But um, if, if I haven't and you've sent me messages, I'm sorry. It, it's getting a little overwhelming at times. Uh, there's over a billion people on Instagram, and the art community is thriving. There's thousands and thousands of ceramic artists from every level, from 40-year veterans to people that are two weeks into their first pottery class, and they're following artists that they enjoy, and they're getting inspired by the pictures that are put up on this platform. Um, so for the people that aren't on Instagram, you can be part of this amazing platform, too. All you have to do is make an account, put up some pictures of your work or not, and just engage, follow and engage with people that you find inspiring and that you enjoy their work. Because chances are they will engage back with you and you can even make some friends. All right. <laughs> so hold, hold on, I'll explain. So at this point, many of you, possibly the high school, college students, recent grads, or anyone else might be thinking, neat. That's fantastic, Kurt, but how do I get 100,000 followers? How can I support myself with my work? How can I quit my job? How can I, how can I do all these things? That's what I'm here to hear. Um, I want you to know that, uh, um, sorry, everyone wants to know the secret. You want to know um, how it can happen quickly and how you can do it with a lot of work, and I, and without a lot of work. And I'm here to tell you three things. You can do this. I truly believe that anyone can if you put in the work. It's not easy, it's not fast, and there is no secret. Um, and the big thing that I want to end this little thing with is uh, do not, in my personal opinion, treat this as the same kind of marketing campaign as a company would use. Now, I know a lot of you are probably pretty curious about that last one, and I could seriously talk about this one point for an hour just in itself. But the quick version is people today, especially in America, they know when they're being, when a hard sale is put in front of them. They don't like it. You are not a Coca-Cola commercial. You are not selling jeans, and you are not selling cell phones. Do not use marketing gimmicks, and don't, just don't do it, in my opinion. If, if you want to, go for it, but in my experience, um, those kind of things uh, don't lead to a very good interaction between you and your um, base of customers on Instagram. I want to make one thing very clear before we continue, and I said the, something similar about this at the very beginning. Um, 
Instagram is a social media network, and we are essentially, I, I, people might disagree with me, but we are essentially hacking it for free marketing. There has never been an opportunity in the history of the world where everyone in this room has access to a potential customer base of over a billion people for just their time and energy. And that's what Instagram is. It is absolutely amazing. And we are taking this social media network that allows people to connect and make friends and share pictures of their cats and pizza with each other, and we are turning it into free marketing. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable and unheard of in the history of marketing. So before you get upset about lack of growth on Instagram or before you start blaming the algorithm for your woes on Instagram, just understand that Instagram is a social media platform. We are basically abusing their system for marketing for free. And that yes, Instagram does want you to pay for ads, but you don't have to if you do things right. So I've already given you the basics of what you need to do. You share your work on Instagram and you engage with people that engage with you. And that's it. That is literally the core of what I do. I put up pictures and video, and when people say things to me, I say things back. It's as simple as that. And I want to put this up on the screen. This is something that I was shown uh, a couple years ago. And as I, my following has grown on Instagram, I like to show this when I give talks about it. Because a lot of people will sit in the audience and they're like, you have 100,000 followers. I can't do this. It will take me way too long to get to 100,000 followers. But I think that this sums it up pretty well, is you don't need to have 100,000 followers. You can make a living off of your beautiful artwork and your hard work without having that huge mass. There are people running around Instagram in the ceramic world that are making a living off of far less. So don't be intimidated by these numbers. Just know that if you spend the time and energy, you can build a good base of fans and customers that will just be dying to get a piece of your work. So I said it was those two things. Put pictures on the internet and talk to people. But let's zoom in. Let's go closer. How, how are these goals accomplished? The first thing is that you can have the most beautiful work in the entire world. You are absolutely incredible, second to none. If you do not take good pictures, good video, and document that work well, it will not, um, it'll not gain traction. People are scrolling. Did it ever, how many people went to Paul's lecture yesterday? OK, so Paul was saying, how long do you have to get the attention of someone on Instagram? And he took his phone and he went, that. That is how long you have to get their attention. Your post, the picture that you put up, is surrounded by pictures that other people are putting up. Um, and if your post is dimly lit, out of focus, or not framed well, people's brains just skip right over it. So this is priority number one. Take a photography class. I did. I think that this is something that every artist can benefit from because if you're not going to be able to document your work in a successful way, no one's going to do it for you. Unless you're upper stratosphere, like you're the best in the world and people are climbing all over to take pictures of your work. But I think that it's always worthwhile to learn how to document your own work well. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Second. Um, second, engaging with people. Um, many of you in the audience already know that this is important. If you do art shows, art fairs, craft fairs, anything like that, and you're standing in front of your work and you're talking to potential customers, you already know how important this is. Because most of those people that end up buying something, they didn't exclusively buy it because they fell in love with it just at first sight. They talked to you. They got to know you as a person. They saw your face. They heard your story. And that is incredibly important on Instagram, if not more important than it is in person. Because on Instagram, it's very easy for people to label you as just a faceless art purveyor. 
So I personally think it is very important to not only engage with your customers, but also put some of your personality into your posts, whether that be how you write your captions, um, if you yourself are in your pictures, or anything like that. It's very important to make sure that people know that you are a person and not just some factory. The other reason for that engagement is so important is because Instagram is a social, social media network. And the algorithms on Instagram, the dreaded algorithm, it genuinely, or it greatly rewards genuine engagement. If you start conversations in your comments with people, if you ask a question in your caption and get people to respond, it really bumps you up in how that algorithm works and your work will be shown to more and more people. And let's be perfectly honest, that is the goal. The goal of what you're doing on Instagram, if you're an artist, in my opinion, is to have your work seen by the most people you possibly can. And many of you might disagree with me. Many people in this audience that might not think that that's a respectable goal. They might think that self-promotion is not something that artists should strive for. Um, and they might not think that that's what art is about, is out here just trying to get your stuff in front of as many people as possible. And you're right. That is not what art is all about. That is what marketing is all about. And this, is, this talk right now is about marketing, not about art. Many artists don't want to spend the time to do this. This is time consuming. Anyone that's actually on Instagram right now can probably attest to this. It is, it is tough to put up posts consistently. It is tough to engage with people consistently. It's a difficult and time consuming thing to do. But the way that I look at it is that I was working 40 hours a week at a job and making my ceramics on the side. My big goal for building an Instagram and starting to sell my ceramics is so I wouldn't have to work that 40 hour a week job. I wanted more time to hone my craft. I was just sitting at work so bored, like I have to find a way to get more hours to mold make and test glazes and all of these things. I have to get more hours to it. And now I'm at this point where yes, I spend 20 hours a week doing online Instagram marketing. But because I'm making a living off of my work, that's better than the 40 hours a week that I was sitting at my desk job, to me. To me personally, that freed up 20 hours per week, 80 hours a month that I get to spend working with Clay, honing my skills so that one day I can be as good as I would like to be in my head. All right, so for the people that went to Paul's talk uh, yesterday, uh, is Paul in the audience? Paul Blaze? Oh, that slacker. Um, <laughs> So I said, the goal is to get the most people to see your work. So he explained it as this marketing funnel. But even in his talk, he mentioned that um, it's not really a funnel because it doesn't, like, not everyone gets to the bottom. So personally, I like to think of it as Plinko. In Plinko, you put the balls in the top, and they hit the little pegs as they go down. And um, as they go down, fewer and fewer have the possibility to make it into the bottom middle segment. And if you get it into the middle, you get $10,000 from um, Drew Carey. Um, so how do we get the most people? We, we have people seeing our work. A certain percentage of those people will like the work. A certain percentage of those people will follow you. A certain percentage of those people will go to your website. And a certain percentage of those people will click the Buy button. So in this equation, in my, uh, you can try all you want to get uh, to increase the percentages along the way, but the real thing that you have control over is how many balls you put in the top. The more balls you put in the top, the higher probability you have of more of them making it to the center. Does that make sense? It is a completely unrealistic idea to think that everyone that sees your beautiful work is going to buy it. That is just not the reality we live in. But I think that the, the way that you can hedge your bets the best is to get the most people possible to see your work. So let's step it up. Now you are, you've taken a photography class, you're taking great pictures, you are genuinely engaging with people, but there's gotta be more to it, so what's next? I believe that the next step is these three things. You have to show what makes you unique. 
There are thousands and thousands of artists on Instagram and thousands of ceramic and potters on Instagram. Everyone has something that makes them unique, whether it's a process that you do, it's the way that you photograph your work, um, the details of your work itself, how you write your captions, how you got into clay. I use my own story of how I got into clay a lot on my Instagram. Um, and you have to show what makes you unique, what sets you apart from the other people. Why should someone follow you? You have to find that and then put it out into the world. Making videos is incredibly important if you want to do it. There are plenty of potters that are doing great on Instagram without making videos, but if you really want to get your work in front of as many people as possible, videos are the king of growth content on Instagram. They have a far greater chance of blowing up to reach a large number of people, which will in turn bring you more followers. Um, whether they are um, satisfying hyperlapse videos, time-lapse videos, clips of how you're doing it, um, videos of your process, videos of just interesting things with your work involved, that is what will really get eyes on your Instagram. And the last one is to share your process or story. I know not every artist wants to do this. Personally, I love sharing the journey because I got on Instagram when I had very first started uh, making molds. And I have really enjoyed that process of putting, putting it out there. And this is a hard thing to do for some people because I've put failures, successes, I've put all of it on Instagram, but these are the things that get people emotionally invested into what you're doing, and it makes them feel a sense of community with you, and that is what leads to strong repeat customers, in my opinion. And I kind of messed this up. Um, I have some extra slides, it looks like. We'll get to that. <laughs> or never mind, I'm just losing my mind. Um, so when I first started, um, Instagram is highly competitive. I needed to find something that um, set me apart, and that thing ended up being um, I was using 3D printers to print out prototypes and make molds from there. And this was one thing that led to very early growth for me, is putting up these process pictures. Um, and the biggest point with this and something that I would like all of you to know is when you're getting started, the easiest followers for you to get are other potters, other ceramicists. They are the ones that will, you follow them, you start commenting on their posts, they have a high chance of following you and commenting on your posts. It builds the whole community up and it starts to build your following. And when you're getting growth from other people like that, you're like, oh, I don't want to attract other potters, they're not going to buy my work. But like I said, they are the easiest ones to get up front, and they are the ones that will give you the most genuine interactions on your posts, be interested in what you're doing, and you're going to hopefully make some friends along the way. Like I said before, videos are king. This is, um, these are the video posts that have brought me the most followers per post in the last two years. Uh, if I did this and it was videos and images, it would be about the same. Videos have always brought me more followers in than pictures have. I'm a very strong believer that videos build your audience and pictures of your work are what gets you sales. And again, I said that I share, I share my story, so I won't go into the details, but I got into clay. The only reason that I took my first pottery class is because I got hit by a car and broke my neck. I try to not put that story up too often, about once every six months, but honestly, I found pottery as an unintentional art therapy. It was amazing, and I didn't even know that it was happening at the time, and you would be absolutely astounded by, when I, when I put these posts up sharing my story, how many dozens and dozens of people send me messages and they're like, I got into pottery for a similar reason. I had an accident. I had some bad things happen to me in my life. Like, pottery helped me. And when you share your story and you put that vulnerability up for people to share with you, it can really help develop your brand and make people feel like I, this is an actual human being that I can connect with. Um, the last thing 
The last thing that can make a huge difference in your success on Instagram is being excited about what you do. I am so excited every time I load up a kiln, every time I open that kiln when it's done, I am just tremendously excited about what I'm doing. I share um, my experiments, whether they succeed or they fail, and I share that emotional journey of failure and growth and all of these things, and all of these things build up to getting people involved and getting people to really be interested in what you're doing and in you as a person. By now, by now some of you have probably noticed that I haven't mentioned selling pottery a whole bunch. And this is completely intentional. In my opinion, you are not on Instagram to sell your work. If you go into your Instagram journey with this idea that I am, my goal for being here is to make money, it's already a slippery slope and you're gonna be um, having a hard time from the get-go. Don't use sales tactics, no gimmicks. We're not selling a commodity. You are selling, you're selling your artwork. You're selling a part of yourself. If you do this right and you have good pictures and you build this engagement with your community, people will start asking you, where can I buy this? And at that point, all you have to do is point them to your shop. I really think that this is the most important thing because like I said earlier, people have blinders on when they see sales tactics. Like when you watch TV, you don't pay attention to the commercials. That's why they have to make crazy, outrageous commercials just to try to grab your attention. Because when, as soon as a commercial comes on, your brain goes, they're gonna sell me some shit. And you completely ignore it. So don't do that. You are on here, on this social media platform, to put your work out into the world and engage with people as best you can, share what you're doing, and if you do it right, people will start asking you where they can get it. All right, so truth be told, I have been talking about Instagram in front of people for a few years now. And um, Willie can attest to this, that the, the talk has changed very dramatically. I used to spend half of the talk talking about hashtags, post timing, giveaways, and all of these other things. And as I would talk about all of these things that I'm sure many of you are very interested in because you want to do this in the best way you possibly can. But as I was saying these things, I could tell that people in the audience were just like, that's another thing I have to do and another thing I have to do. And it's so much, and it's so much to remember and taking frantic notes. And I've really changed my idea about the thing, about this whole Instagram thing. Yes, there are things you can do to attain more growth. All of you should use hashtags. Just find other potters that are using hashtags and just copy their hashtags and use the ones they're using. That's all I do. Uh, it, Kate is sitting up here in the front and she has a m far more meticulous way to uh, decide which hashtags to use, but I, that's not how my brain works. So I just, I mean, since I started, I go to people that are doing what I'm doing better than I am and just take the hashtags and start using them. Um, if you go into this with too high of expectations, you're going to get depressed. There are ups and downs on Instagram and it's very easy to fall into the trap where you're looking at the numbers and if the numbers this week aren't as good as the numbers last week, you feel like you're doing something wrong. You look for something to blame and you get superstitious. And a lot of the conversations that I have on Instagram break my heart. There was one guy that um, I was in a group chat with and he felt this, he felt that if he didn't post twice a day, every single day, his entire community on Instagram was just gonna fall apart. And he was beating himself up because of it. So he started putting up posts that weren't as good because generating 14 posts a week is outrageously difficult. So his posts got worse and then he started blaming other things and I was talking to him and he was so upset about this because he could just see it spiraling downwards and I was like, you need to stop. The algorithm is not going to punish you if you take a break. I very much, I post every day. I'm doing this 
or six days a week. I'm doing this full time. I produce a lot of work. It's not that difficult for me to come up with that much content. I know I have very successful friends that post very infrequently and still do great on Instagram. Don't get in your head about these things. Post the best quality content you possibly can, even if it's infrequent, and engage with people. And I promise you that you will have people genuinely interested in your work and it will just grow over time. So on Instagram, I really, the, it seemed like about half of the people in here were already on and half of the people weren't. To the people that aren't on Instagram, you should definitely sign up and follow me <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, seriously, if you're not on Instagram right now and you're hesitant, I think that the first step should be to make an Instagram. Don't obsess over what the name is. You can change it later. I know that is a lot of people's biggest reason for not trying. And then when you get on Instagram, just start trying, go to the search page, look up pottery, look up ceramics, start finding other people's work that you're interested in. Even before you start posting yourself, just go and see what this amazing community has to offer you because it's seriously a ton of fun and it's just amazing to me. There are at least 10 people in this audience that I talk to on a weekly basis on Instagram and they don't even live in the same state as me. And along the way, you might learn a lot and you might even make a lot of sales. You never know unless you try. So thank you. We need to. Okay. All right, so we have some time for questions. We actually have about 10 minutes. I uh, ran through that pretty quick. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, my question is it's pretty quick. I'm, I'm, uh, I was wondering what your thoughts are about um, promotions. Instagram, because I see paid them all promotions? the time. Paid promotions. Paid promotions. Okay, so she asked uh, what my thoughts are on paid promotions on Instagram. I have done them twice. I did one uh, about a year and a half ago, and I did one two weeks ago, specifically in preparation for this talk. They, most places in the history of time, you have had to spend money on marketing. It is something that uh, some people frown upon, but I don't see a problem with it if that's the route you want to go, especially at first. I would say don't jump to paid promotions too quickly until your content is high quality. Because Instagram's job with a paid promotion is simply to get your work in front of people. If they don't like it, that is not Instagram's fault. So if you do want to spend money on paid promotion, which is a fine thing to do, make sure that it is the best quality content you possibly can. Personally, if I was going to start doing this on a regular basis, I would only boost the posts that already did really well to my current audience. Does that help? Cool. Cool. Hi. Hey. Uh, I have two questions. So do you use your cell phone to take pictures or another camera? Um, when, when I first started, I took every single picture on my DSLR. I was trying way too hard. Um, I did go out and buy a Google Pixel 2 because it has a really good camera. Yeah. And my best posts are all on my phone. phone? So okay. definitely don't let the fact that you can't take uh, professional level quality pictures hold you back. Like I said in the talk, well lit, well framed, and in focus. It, it doesn't need to be this professional, amazing picture. They just need to be able to see what it is clearly and colorful, well lit, that kind of thing. Yeah. OK. And then my second one is, do you schedule yourself time to work on your social media, or you just do it like as you're like, oh, this would be a good picture? Uh, you know? I, the, so that doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. I personally just weave it into my day. Okay. If I know that I'm going to throw, I set up the camera to film. If I know that I am going to have work coming out of the kiln, I know that I'm going to need a little bit of time. Like uh, My most popular post in the last six months was, pull it out of the kiln, hold it up to the kiln wall, and snap a picture. Yeah. I, after that, I spent three or four minutes crafting a caption, mm -hmm. and then put it up as one of the best posts. So these are all things that you can't let uh, hold you back. Yeah. And Instagram, like anything else, takes practice. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that you have to develop over time. 
So definitely don't let the idea that you're not good enough right now hold you back. Yeah. You can always archive bad posts later. <laughs> I've archived a lot. Of those. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, so you mentioned earlier that you used to talk about like what the best times are. Uh, what are the best times to post? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I post when it is convenient for me. I post at 8.30 in the morning because that's when I've woken up, had some tea, taken a shower, checked my emails, and I sit down and go, what am I going to post today? Um, sometimes I post in the evening. After a day in the studio, I make a video and I post that in the evening. I don't think about it pretty much at all. I just post whenever it is convenient for my lifestyle. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay, so my question has to do like with regards to branding overall, not mm -hmm. just on Instagram, but having like a consistent brand. Mm -hmm. um, is it important? Do you do you recommend that whatever your brand name is, that it should be consistent across the board? Like if you have a website, I do. Etsy shop, that your name should be consistent. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. I could give an entire talk on this from yeah. my personal opinions. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of you follow Katie Marks, another Seattle artist. Mm -hmm. She doesn't live in Seattle anymore, and her Etsy has a completely different name. And she's doing great. But I've even talked to her before that she it stresses her out but she doesn't know what to do because she's known as that right. and changing it at that point. So when you're thinking about a name for yourself and creating this brand, mm -hmm. keep it simple. Hammerly Ceramics, names are great because they're more unique. Um, her thing in particular, tying yourself to a specific location is kind of a dangerous thing to do. But right. So think about it a little bit, but don't obsess over it because you can change your name on, mo on pretty much any platform later on. Right. Um, but I do believe that it's important to keep it consistent because if people go to look you up, like if people look up Hammerly Ceramics, it's website, Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, and it's all in a line. Right. So I think that it is important, but don't, uh, don't let it hold you back from getting started. Okay. Okay. Yep. Great. Thanks. No problem. Hi. Hi. I have a question about the story function of Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I have not used it yet, and it's a little intimidating. I'm wondering how much you find that that factors into growing your following. So I, I keep my posts pretty professional. I, I think that if you are going to put personal things into your feed, like actual posts, it, it can be a dangerous game, and you should do it very infrequently. But I treat the stories very differently. My stories are what I'm cooking for dinner, um, the plants that I'm growing. I put up stories of my cats occasionally, but I try to keep that to a minimum. Um, <laughs> no? OK. I'll, I'll rethink it. Um, um, I use the story to personalize myself. Does that make sense? Like the, the stuff is only there for 24 hours, so I really don't take it super seriously. And I share personal things there, or process. So either today I was in the studio and I was making molds and I took a couple videos, and that just goes in the story. Or like I said, making dinner or whatever. I think that the story is best used that way. Um, there's a couple other ways to do it. Like you, I, when I do a sale on Etsy, I put in my story. The sale is at this time. They just put a countdown thing in there. Um, story has a lot of value, and all. I don't follow all the articles that come out about how to best use Instagram, but everything that I have seen, the little bit that I've seen, says that stories are the fastest growing way to reach people. Uh, you can use hashtags in stories, but I'm I'm not an expert on that. I just use it as a means to make myself seem like an actual human, rather than just a, bot, a robot putting up pictures of mugs constantly. Thanks, that makes sense. <laughs> OK. Hi. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm really intimidated by video. OK. Uh, so I enjoy the um, photos, and I'm, I feel like yeah. I'm pretty good about crisping them up a bit. Yeah. Um, so how long of a video is a valuable video? I know you don't want too much. Yeah, you can, you can only put a minute long video on Instagram. Well, mm, now there's a way to do Instagram, yeah. TV, in a post, but we want to get into that. Um, everything I've ever read in the last three or four years says that 26 seconds is the sweet spot. Okay. I've always felt that shorter is better. My, my videos that have been a minute long, like the full length, they don't gain as much traction. Okay. Uh, the key thing with videos is you, you really have to get the point that you're making across quickly. Okay. So if you're doing, if you're throwing, you really want the first couple seconds 
to be, like you want it to get started quick. Okay. You don't want it to be like, oh, it's slow and slow and slow and then 45 <laughs> seconds later something happens. Like people have quick attention spans, so, but like, like I was saying, it takes practice. Video especially takes tons of practice. Oh, I know. And videos are super hit or miss. Some of the craziest videos, my most popular video in the last six months is me putting a mug on my fist, dipping it in glaze, shaking it off, and that was it. Okay. And I took it with a phone in my hand, and it got hundreds of thousands of views. And I was like, this is absurd. But <laughs> it's, it's what happens. Um, last year at Inseca in Pittsburgh, um, I'm friends with uh, Sean and Valeri from Forest Ceramico. And at the time, they'd put up this video where they're carving one of their mugs, as I'm sure many of you had seen, and it crumbles in his hand. Oh. And that post got up to 7.2 million <laughs> views because it crumbles in his hand, and then it pans up to Sean's face and he's like, just like pouty. <laughs> and it turned into a meme where people were tagging like, this is my life right now because everything's going great. And then it just falls apart instantaneously. So you, you never know what video is gonna gain traction. Um, definitely don't be intimidated. Posts can be archived. People have short attention spans. They're not gonna remember your first attempts. So just, just go for just it. Just do it. Yeah. The other question I have is, do you put yourself into many of your images or stay more uh, with your pots? Because I don't like me in my images. <laughs> you don't have to. Okay. It, it works better for young blonde girls. Uh, most, of my, <laughs> most of my pictures, I mean, this is, yeah. I, this, is, this is the truth statistically. I put up pictures of myself, like the one of me in the halo, because the post is, has, it has a story, it has a point, so they do well. But most of the posts I put up with my face in them just bomb completely. Okay. Good. Then, then I feel yeah. better about that. So you don't have to do that. You can, you can humanize yourself through other means. Okay, good. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I just had one more question. Okay. Um, well, there's no you... one behind you, so. Oh, I'll just stay here then. Hi. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, have you ever done any giveaways, and what were the effects, or uh, no? Giveaways are great for raising vanity metrics. I don't know if the people that follow you for giveaways turn over to actual customers. Okay. So when you're getting started, yes, the number of followers you have does give you some weird internet clout, and it is important in some ways, but it is a vanity metric, and okay. at my point especially, I'm far more interested in gaining um, genuine, um, really engaged followers than I am with just raising that number. And I say that, but I'm doing a giveaway with another artist next <laughs> week. So most of the time, other people come to me and they're like, do you want to do a giveaway? And I'm like, uh, okay. Because it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Okay. So doing all those Instagram giveaways to try to raise up and get people excited, they work, but I don't know if they attract, I think they attract a lot of kids on Instagram, so I don't know. Okay. All right, I was just It's curious. worth trying, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thanks. Well. Um, what is your philosophy on following your followers? And um, who do you follow, and do you think that affects your brand, and? Um, there are, there are absolutely some people I follow out of a sense of obligation for various reasons, but I, and I haven't had it happen in a while, but some people like message me and they're like, I follow you, you should follow me back. And I'm like, nah, I, I try to just keep it as genuine as possible. If I like your work and I think what you're doing is interesting, I will follow you. Local classes, you want to be doing targeted Facebook local marketing that you have to pay for. Building a local following on Instagram is really difficult. I mean, you, everyone should definitely geotag every single post that you do because that could just potentially, people can find you through your location. So do that, but I don't think Instagram is a good place to grow a local following. It's really hard. Uh, gaining that local following that's gonna come in and actually convert into a sale for a class, I think that you might have to spend some money on targeted local Facebook marketing. And yeah, we do that. Yeah. Too, so. okay. Yeah, but Instagram's tough for that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? That's a tough question. So she's asking about if, if you make a video, is it important to have your branding built into that video? Because you get reposts and they don't tag you and it's just, it's annoying. Um, I don't do it. I used to. I used to have a splash screen on the end of every video that would just be my logo and my name zooming in slowly. I, I don't like the constant uh, watermarks. Like, I know. Your banner's in the background or something, so it's like part of the scene? Oh, yeah. I, in my studio, in my basement, I have my logo on the wall this big. 
and I put it in the background of most of the videos. Um, so I like that, but I know a lot of people that put their Instagram handle in text, watermarked on the video, and personally I think that's a little, it's salesy, yes, and people notice that, yeah. Oh, that's a really good question. So she asks, like, I, I take pictures um, when my kiln is being unloaded. I take probably 30 or 40 pictures. Do I post them all immediately? No. Um, I post one um, right then, and I limit myself to one post per day. So today, this morning, I put up a post from Inseca that was a picture I took when I unloaded the kiln. Because I really, I believe in consistent content over just dumping a bunch out. Because uh, at one of my workshops, or one of my, not workshops, one of my seminars about Instagram, I met a guy and he came up to me and he's like, I'm having so much trouble. People follow me and then a day later they unfollow me. He was posting 14 times a day. He had 8,000 posts and I was like, what are you doing? Like, your followers follow you, and then the next time they open Instagram, half the posts they see are yours. Of course they're gonna unfollow you. And he was totally blown away by this. Like it was, it was he, he just thought more, 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 more was better. But I think that trickling out that content is way more important than just, this batch is done, here is all of it. So, does that help? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming.